Good evening, everyone. It is Sunday, May the 17th. And here we are for another 8 p.m. Central Time concert broadcast live from Access Contemporary Music here in Chicago. It has been raining torrentially all day. It's crazy. Just super crazy. Hold on just a second. I'm, I'm so nervous now. Okay, good. I'm always, <laughs> my mic cable has been fussy, and so I'm just making sure that it's all in order. But anyway, as I mentioned, I am broadcasting from Access Contemporary School of Music, which is where I teach. I have been here for coming up on seven years. Access Contemporary Music was founded by Seth Bosted, who is the host of Relevant Tones at one time on WFMT for many years and now a live stream. And uh, this is where I spend most of my time these days because we are still very much functioning and we actually have an event coming up in less than a week. We're doing a live streamed student recital, virtual, obviously. All of our uh, students' videos are due. Uh, students' videos are due to not tomorrow, Tuesday. Yep. And then we also have a student-produced film festival that was supposed to be on March 28th, but is now going up uh, June 13th. Normally, we would be having it at the Davis Theater, but unfortunately, you know, that's not going to happen. We're going to have to live stream it. Um, additionally, ACM is also known for our Sound of Silent Film Festival, which was all suppo supposed to be on the 28th. Sorry, I'm going to check again. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll never stop. Oh, dear. Anyway, our Sound of Silent Film Festival, we're still working on exactly how that's meant. We're looking for a proper venue, but we're all back to practicing our music again, and I'm really excited to get that started. Anyway, let's talk about the stuff I'm doing today. Now, ordinarily, I like to do a very long-winded intro to the music that I'm going to be playing on a particular day. However, these are two pieces that I've actually written myself, and I've done a couple shows where I've played my music, but they've always been from something from theater. For about six years, I was involved in the theater community here in Chicago. And so I played some music from my shows. I don't often, I don't often um, write concert music. I don't, not anymore. I did it quite a lot when I was in college, but that just sort of uh, fell off for whatever reason. But these are two pieces for flute that I have written. They weren't written at the same time, but I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play them. And then I'll talk a little bit about them afterward. Yeah, I think so. Just because, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that I want to say. But first, pretty much everything I want to say is in the pieces. But then I'll talk a little bit about how they came to be or whatever. But um I'm very eager to play these for you. One of them is a piece that I play quite a lot, have played quite a lot. It's been a while since I've played it. Uh, and then the other is a piece, this will actually only be the third time I've ever played it. So, uh, and they, they actually flow right into each other. So there's no break in between them. But um, I think uh, I will go ahead and get started. So without further ado, this is Evening Hymn and then On a Windswept Plain. Oh, forevermore. You know, I closed out like all of my programs. I always close out my programs before I start my show. <laughs> I closed out my music. Oh, that was silly of me. Come on, baby. There we go. Good. All right. There she is. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, <clears throat> so that was Evening Hymn, and then, oh goodness, all these windows. So that was Evening Hymn, and then Anna Winswick Plain. So just to talk a little bit about those pieces, they were actually written in reverse order. Um, the latter piece I just played, Anna Winswick Plain, was actually my first composition assignment when I was in college. Um, I entered college with no intention of majoring in, uh, in composition at all. I, I came in <clears throat> ostensibly as a flute performance major, but music education was what I was there for. It was <clears throat> at, at Point Loma at the time, the music education degree was just the most substantial. There really wasn't a reason to get a performance degree. Um, and there was just more to it. But I found that I was writing a lot of music because at the time Point Loma had a very small but very committed and very talented uh, program. But it was mostly it was mostly like education majors, and so there was a really rich resource of of musicians who was who were willing to play my stuff and sing my stuff. I I found that I wrote a lot of vocal stuff while I was there, and then I started studying composition with Philip Kevrin. Any of you who teach piano will know the name Philip Kevrin. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a big gun. And uh, the first assignment that he gave us, gosh, it must have been the end of September of 2000, so long ago, but he told his entire composition studio, um, he told his entire composition studio, just write a piece called On a Went Plane. And that was it. He gave us the title. And that was it. And that was the piece that I wrote. And it was kind of amazing how all of us in the composition, in his composition studio, kind of took that and ran with it in just sort of our own, you know, different ways. And uh, that's actually what you just heard right now. That's actually the first time where I've ever accompanied myself on piano. Uh, I actually deliberately at that time wrote a piano part that I couldn't play at the time. Um, I mean, I can play it now, <laughs> but at the time I couldn't. And um, for those of you in the in the audience who were at Point Loma, all of you will remember the name Renee Calvo. Renee was a, well, I mean, is, I mean, she teaches at San Diego State, no, um, University of San Diego now, but she was part of our department at the time, and she, we didn't have a staff accompanist. Normally, conservatories, music departments will have someone whose job is, it is to accompany everybody. And Renee was the unpaid staff accompanist, and she wasn't even staff, she was a student, and she was a voice major, and, but she was this amazing collaborative pianist. And the whole joke was, whenever we'd have a student recital, 
there would be a whole host of people scouring the building with their like copy of like 24 Italian art songs going, Renee, you know, and she'd have to jump in and, and do it. And so Renee was actually the first person who played this on piano for me. And every, every pianist who's ever played that piece has left their mark on it. Um, every single, and there've probably been, I don't know, 30 at this point. And every pianist plays a little bit differently. And sometimes I will go in and like make little changes to the manuscript to reflect how they played it. And my friend Sarah Leibert and I played this on, gosh, this must have been December of 2003. This was my first concert uh, when I was a master's candidate at University of Colorado at Boulder. And so that piece is very special to me. Um, the piece that came before it was Evening Hymn. And this is a piece that I admittedly, I still don't know what to do with. I think anyone who ever tries to create anything artistically, whether it be a piece of music, um, a short story, a novel, um, a screenplay, a painting, a dance piece, anything, there are pieces, there are things that you create where things really flow organically as you write them. And you might run into little bits here and there, but it all, flows pretty naturally. And then you have other pieces that don't. And Evening Hymn is definitely one of those pieces. I wrote it when I was still in Colorado. Um, the time I spent in Colorado was not a happy time at all. Um, there are very few, I, I do have some positive memories of Colorado, but there aren't many of them. And that opening unaccompanied flute solo is actually, so at the time I rented a uh, I rented my, my sister and, and her family, they lived in a, a little house in Longmont, and, but they, in the basement they had a self-contained one bedroom apartment that has had its own entrance, and that's what I rented from them. But they made the decision to sell the house, and so there was a period of a good, there was a good four month period where it was just me in the apartment. And later in the year, after they, after they had moved out, some, uh, I would go upstairs into the house, in the empty house, it was all wood floors and everything was bare and so really reverberant acoustics. And that opening flute solo was what I used to play when I was alone in their house. And then trying to cobble together a piece out of that, I don't know, I performed it, performed it on a recital in 2007 and then I performed it again in 2009 and I haven't performed it since. I still haven't quite figured out what the hum I'm gonna do with it. Um, it doesn't feel finished. And you know, this is not humble brag at all. This is just, it's a piece that I've never, it's really dear to me and I mean everything I've said in it, but it just has never quite gelled. It, it never, it's never felt natural, you know? And so I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of stuck right now. I'm like, well, do I go back and, and kind of rework it? Or do I just say, well, this is the piece, however imperfect because on a once with plane, I had always intended it to be like the last movement of like a four movement or some arbitrary number. Four was the number I picked. And so that's why Evening Hymn sort of flows into on a once with plane. I never wanted on a once with plane to be just a standalone piece of music. But um, I've played it again. And I can actually say honestly that having put together the piano part for this, and having learned it again, you know, played it again for the first time in 11 years, it is making a little bit more sense to me. Um, I will tell you though, I'm gonna have to rework that piano part. The piano part is just unnecessarily brutal. It, it, and it just in dumb ways, you know, I need to go back and rework it so it's a bit more natural. I think pianists are so used to playing badly written music because everyone fancies themselves to be a you know a, a piano composer and there's just stuff that does not fit the hand at all so it's always a joy <laughs> when a pianist gets to play something that's you know a bit more natural uh, so that's something I really want to do um, but I do having said that like I said this is the first time I've ever gotten to accompany myself on a so plane. So let's maybe take a look back at, I think last week when I recorded the, uh, when I recorded the, uh, the piano part. Just a little behind the scenes moment for you. Damn it. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of those. <laughs> There's a lot of swearing. <laughs> but anyway, um, tomorrow night 
is the third week I will be performing a movement from a piece called Seasons by Herman Beeptink. I started with spring, last week was summer, and you guessed it, tomorrow is autumn. Uh, I actually have two Herman Beeftink pieces this week, which I'm really excited about. On Friday, I'm playing a piece for four flutes called Frequency, which I really enjoy. Um, in fact, when he found out that I was playing his music, he actually just like gave it to me for free, which I thought was pretty cool. But uh, I really hope you'll tune in for that. But it's just, as always, it's just been wonderful to play for you. Um, please come back and see me again. Uh, you know where I'm going to be. Uh, in fact, um, if you're not already a member of the Live at ACM event group, um, if you're here, you've probably been invited. Um, no pressure. But I have all of the concerts planned through the end of May, and I will con continue to do these. Um, after May into June, but I have them all planned at least through the end of May and so check it out because there's some really cool things that I've got planned But as always, please stay happy. Please stay healthy And I will look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night at 8 central time <laughs>